his life there. And then he was called into the court of death. And it's not that you are called and then you go there and wait. If death wants to talk to you and you are on carcery anywhere, you can go to his domain. Did death ever move like literally any limb? No. And that's one thing I love about him. Uh, in, in, in Dungeons and Dragons, death is often referred to as Nerul. Same guy. If you hear Nerul, that's the guy that I call death. And there's different deaths, but that's a story I could tell a different time. So Yoni just shows up in death's throne room. And next to him is one of his avatars. Uh, every deity, every major deity has an avatar. There's a few minor forms I am aware of, yeah? Yeah. Uh, but you don't get an, you don't have avatar unless you're a living deity. And the only exception is death. Because while death is indeed a dead deity, they are eternal because they are death. Every deity has several avatars, yeah? Uh, in my world, dead deities don't get avatars anymore. But they can, pr they can, uh, they can, you know, manifest themselves in other ways. Um, so Yoni sees death, and the only indication that death is speaking to you is that, A, you can hear its voice, and B, this cold air kind of exudes off of its body, which is mostly a skeleton, although sometimes death appears with some flesh attached. It never looks like any particular person. It always looks like a corpse and unidentifiable. Death tells Yoni that it struck a deal, or rather its avatar struck a deal with Yoni's living compatriots. Imagine and so, that. <laughs> and so Yoni will get to go back, but he is forever bound to death and to carcery because he gave up his life. Um, so he, he will return when his task is done. And another time, uh, in a different campaign, still involving Yoni, for whatever reason, Yoni became the new avatar of death. Uh, story for another time. Oh, oh, is that what we fucking shit? Is that what we shit? There we go. Sorry, I had to focus because I only get so many seconds with this. Poor Bill. I... I'm expecting an unbreakable. So another time, a different party went to Carcery, but they first got lost in the City of Doors. Uh, the City of Doors is at the center of the Outlands and is also uh, known as Sig uh, Vigil I, or Sigil. I don't remember which. Um, but it has a whole bunch of doors to different planes. And uh, Sigil. Sigil, yeah. Yeah, you've been there a few times. Um, I don't have a ten minute timer. I'm going to reset the clock at some point. Um, I wanted to get a fresh bill. Oh, he's all the way over there already. Um, so the party got, the party got stuck in Sigil. And, um, Yoni, as the Avatar of Death, showed up. 
and guided them uh, through some doors into carcery. What? The only thing left is haunted ground. Ah. They already, I think they already split up my gens pretty bad. There we go. So the party enters Carcery, and then Yoni basically tells them, all right, you can get home on your own from here. But they didn't really know how to do that. So then they ended up walking the halls. And they were really, like, a really strong party. So they didn't have to worry about Carcery's, like, deadly atmosphere. And they didn't have to worry about, like, the denizens of Carcery because they were strong enough to just fight whoever. Ah, fuck. Um, so they just basically were like, let's just go see the deity of this plane and whatever we can do about that. And so through a couple divinations and bill for stack. Yeah, it's a bill for stack <laughs> through a couple divinations and some uh, clever, bills, yeah. clever movement. They ended up getting into uh, Death Central Hall. And then eventually Yoni comes back, explains that he is the avatar of death, and also why didn't you I immediately wonder if go they home? Believe in themselves. <laughs> I bet they do. Um But uh after after a quick conversation with death itself and Yoni again as a guide uh, the party had to crawl out of Carcery, and the way to do that, you know, the reason I brought all this up, is that Carcery is a series of infinite planes. And Oni, you say? Just to be sure I am hearing correctly. Yoni. J-O-U-N-I. Yoni is a person. That's his name. He's a clown. Ah. Uh, Yoni. Yoni. <laughs> Wow, it actually said Yoni. Something fucked up. Like, Jesus Christ, Bill. Um, so, first they had to get out of the castle. And that could be easy enough because I was surprised too. I was expecting to hear Juni. Yeah, right. <laughs> Juni. Ah. Um.
So you just have to like look around to get out of the castle carcery. And once you're outside, you go you're on the surface of a very small planetoid. And this this planetoid is like hard to stand on. There's jagged stones everywhere. Why is he dead? Um, you can get cut up pretty bad if you have no way to fly. Um, but this planetoid is in the center of a field of really tiny planetoids. And if you can jump hard enough, you could jump to the next one. And they're all suspended in space and nothing moves and nothing ever happens here. Uh, so you jump around and they use divination to find out where to go. But eventually one of these is connected by a mountain that you can't see the top of. And even if you're outside, you look at this planetoid and it looks like this mountain goes on forever. Where were the cross players live? GC7 AAA. Uh, crossplay on Guilty Gear Strive? Because that's what I wanted to hear. Yeah? I'm about to run out of time on this, but... I mean, I it's have beta. more to say. Nice. So you have to walk in. Oh, well, I'll see if I could do that uh, next time I'm on Strive. I got 45 seconds left in this timer, but I could just finish out this story instead. So, once you climb the mountain, at some point, uh, it gets difficult to breathe, but you invert, you go through an inversion of reality, and you crawl out of a cave on another planetoid in a similar space, but this space is full of swirling colors all in the distance, and is partially touching the astral plane. Tell me they're all just hiding right now, like... Um, so all of these planetoids are, like, a lot larger, and they, they're they more like actual, like, moons. You could actually, like, live on one if you really wanted to, although they have different properties that make them really difficult to withstand. <laughs> is cursory the six planes all stacked on each other I can't uh, recall I don't remember I think it is like six of them though there's a lot of planes uh, but on, on, an, on one of the planetoids here is also a mountain and we're doing this in reverse by the way uh, normally you would go in the cave and climb down the mountain uh, to get back out, you climb up the mountain and come out the cave. But you do this basically six times or maybe seven times. I'm not really sure what my notes say, but it's probably base base kit. <clears throat> um, and on the uppermost plane is just a single planetoid. And this is the weird one where it's very, very large. About the, like larger than the Earth. And... The only way to get inside Carcery proper is to find that particular cave that leads to the top of the mountain. I'm back. Sorry, my internet decided it didn't want to support a 720p stream. <laughs> what the shit? What are we talking about? We're talking about uh, Carcery in Dungeons and Dragons, but also like specifically the the version I run in my homebrew games. And I actually just came to the end of it. Um, uh, I just wanted to get the hit. We love the planes. Right, we do love the planes. Airplane I, Nayum. 
<laughs> I like Carcery because all the denizens there are there. Some of them are devils. Some of them are demons. Uh, they're all considered outsiders, but they're not like explicitly devils and demons. Uh, there could be even uh, angels and the beatifics out there, depending on who's doing what, where. But um, all of them don't really care if people are walking around on carcery. It's not like if you're walking around in hell and the denizens there will try to torture you for some fun. Or if you're in the abyss, people will try to eat you. On Carcery, you might get attacked by something that wants to eat you. You might get attacked by something looking for mischief, but most of the time, people there are gonna ask you, why the fuck are you here? To be honest, I don't really know what I'm doing with Death Slinger, but it's working out all right. Mostly, I wanted to get the aiming down, and I. It's Quadrabill. Quadrabill with four Quadraboons. You really just. I think I accidentally mind gamed him by waiting. These last two bills have like all their hooks because the first fucking bill quit. LMAO. Just like ah, that was a lot bigger than I expected. That's what she said. <laughs> I just couldn't get around it. She happened to mention that. Damn. These bills were really tough, like for no fucking reason. That's what he said. He said he can't get around. Bob's and Vajin. Bob's and Vagine. I got both the doors. Show am I the way? Show me the way. Is that that knuckles mean? Yeah. All right. I hear other bill near here. 
Break COVID memes pog champ. I'm just gonna fall back. Bill's already fully recovered. The Bills have already fully recovered. <laughs> Try to get him like right on the foot there. Did he dead hard lull? I don't, I don't think so. But he ran into a dead end. This time we'll take him away from the doors. Oh wait, this is, this guy's last, this last. He got deep wound, yeah. If you escape the chain or if you take a hit on your first hit, you get a deep wound. Ah. Uh, it's just a way to... It's so that uh, Deathslinger doesn't lose out on the first hit, but also uh, the survivor doesn't get fucked over on it either. Um, you know, if, this, if, uh, if Deathslinger happens to like miss with their attack or whatever, it's not a wasted shot. But also, Deep Wound is a good placeholder. Like, it makes it so people that are hit by your gun also cannot immediately get back into action. Wachi, like, went to the doors. He's like, I don't care about the hatch. Yep. Well, they could. But not smart LMAO. <laughs> Those were some some interesting bills. I love I love the final bill went for the exit gate and I was just like, I don't know. Maybe he's at the hatch. I really just should have thought about that. Interesting game. Yeah, that was probably my best best Death Slinger match since he came out. Ah oh, no. I think this was a rando. He didn't actually have a bill prepared. And these three were together. I might have played with Sammy DM before. I wasn't sure though. F to Bill. F to Bill. 